Howdy Thrill Seekers, this is Professor Mark Toonery from cartooneyville.com with another demo for you on desktop cartooning. Today we'll look at how you can add a touch of realism to your vector illustrations by using gradients with the Mesh tool. And as an added bonus, we'll also peek at some of the artistic brushes we can use with a brush library. Uh, I'll go to freeimages.com. It's a great place to find some really good high quality yet uh, legal uh, photographs to use and I'll type in like beetle or ladybug. Ladybug is usually a pretty good one. And there's a nice one right there. Okay and I will, um, I mean technically I might usually download it but I think right now just to be a little quicker, well maybe I should download it. Let's see. Okay, and then I will go into um, I'll start a new print one. I'll call it Ladybug, eight and a half by eleven inches. That should be fine. So I'll hit create, and I like to hold down the space bar to move around. It's just a little bit easier. I'll go to File Place. Okay, so there's the Ladybug. Place her. And I'm actually gonna um, probably put her off to the side just a little bit because I'll sort of be going back and forth as you'll see. And uh, just like we've done with the other uh, projects, I'm going to um, double click on the icon of the layer. I'll rename it photo. And the main things I wanna do here is go to lock and dim image. Now at a certain point, I am gonna need to come back and uh, undim that image when I start trying to apply the color. So I'm going to click on, uh, for now, I'll go ahead and click dim image and say, okay, so I can see what I'm doing. I'll make a new layer. And just for the purposes of this demo, what I'll probably do is I will hit, uh, I will call that the, um, I don't know, wings shell, what do you call it? I'll call it back. So as before, I'll grab my pen tool, maybe zoom in just a little bit, Command plus on the Mac and Control plus on the PC. And let's see, I'll just get this main shape here. So, cause that's actually a pretty good demonstration of what the gradient tool is really all about. So I'm just clicking and dragging, as you've probably seen me do before in the other demos. And one thing I see right away that I need to change is how I've got a white fill with a black stroke. I actually want to do uh, no fill. So I'm going to click on the fill to bring that to the front. I'm going to click on none there and just continue so now I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to click and drag those little anchor points and the, the handles, I should say and click and drag. Now I'm probably not going to preserve this uh, black outline with the real thing, uh, but just, you know, to get the basic shape right, that should work. So it looks like I need to come in a little bit here, so I'm going to hover over to bring the path in just a little bit more and use my arrow key to bring it up and in, and sort of the same thing here. It's pretty good. Actually, I need to maybe bring that down just a tiny bit. That's pretty good. I think for our purposes, that should get us going. So um, this might, oh, uh, I'll, I think I'm going to go ahead and get the spots too while I'm at it. Uh, but I'll put the spots on a separate layer. I'm going to go to, I'll make a new layer. Click spots. Or I could even do details because you see I'll probably do that line down the center of her back. I'll probably do that on a separate layer. But I could do that. You know, you could kind of go either way on that. So, um, with the pen tool, making sure I'm on the spots layer, I'll draw some little spots there. And I mean, you would think they're just perfect because we usually think of ladybugs as we see them in the cartoons, but there's actually a little bit of texture to them. And we're going to get to that. I'm not going to do that much detail with this. That would certainly take some time. And I think we could, there's a another method that we've sort of dabbled at before that'll really help us. 
No, that's why I think I need to come in. I'm just going to use the arrow key on my keyboard again. Uh, that's what I'm doing there. Okay, and then there's one last one over here. And I'm trying not to get like right on that line. I don't think it'll try to intersect it, but I really don't want it to. And I don't want to take the chance. So the easy thing, I might just go ahead and do the spots. So as you can see, let me, um, I'm going to undim that for the moment. So just double clicked under layer options. I took off dim images. Okay, so we can see the actual colors a little bit better. Uh, it's still locked, so I can, but I can still get the colors if I need them. So we see those little irregular um, areas on the outside. The first thing I'm probably going to do, which is a pretty quick fix, I'm going to make sure that I have uh, both my stroke and the brushes. But really, I'm a little more interested in seeing the brushes. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and select them all. And I'm going to change this. Uh, I think I'm going to I'll go ahead and fill them with black. So what I'll probably do is swap that around. So at the moment, it's got a black fill with no stroke. But I do actually want to add a stroke. So I'm going to come over here while they're still all selected and see if I can just click up on the stroke just a little bit. And of course, they're both black. It's got a black fill and a black stroke. So what I'm going to do to make that, to try to get that little irregular uh, area around the side is on my brushes, I might actually just use this charcoal feather. That's actually, uh, that, that's probably going to do a pretty good job. So I'm just going to click on that. And it did indeed. It's just, the only thing is it looks like it's, uh, for some reason, it looks like it's chosen sort of a charcoal gray for the stroke. So I'm going to click to bring my stroke to the front and under here under color where I'm pretty sure this is no fill, black and white. I'm just going to change that to pure black. There we go. So let me hide the photo so you can see. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, now on this one, I might actually bring it in just to, I'm going to cheat just a little bit and bring that in so it doesn't overlap the edge. Okay, and I'll bring that back. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics right there of just filling in your flat colors. But what we really wanted to look at is the, um, the gradient, uh, the gradient mesh tool, in fact. So what I'm gonna do to get the gradient mesh tool, the first thing I'll probably do is grab this main area of her back, and I'm just gonna fill it with, you know, what looks like a pretty, about as basic as a color gets is probably right somewhere here in the middle. And we'll start from there and then we're going to go back in and add that gradient mesh so that we can see, um, you know, where those, those uh, variations are going to go. So while I've got the whole thing selected, I'm going to click to bring this, the fill to the front. And now with the fill to the front, I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool, which will come in handy in a moment with the gradient as well, the gradient mesh. And I'm just going to pick that very basic color. And there we go. That's not bad. But there are, um, that's just the beginning. So what I'm going to do, and you might find it easier just to go ahead and um, grab the whole thing, because remember our uh, photo layer is actually locked. So what I can do is I'm just going to hold down shift. So I know I'm moving it in a perfectly straight line. So if I need to move it back later for whatever reason, um, it you know I just have to figure out you know the the X position rather than the uh, you know some weird diagonal or something. Okay. So here's the basics of the gradient mesh tool. I'm going to select the object. In fact, I'll I'll go ahead and lock the spots too, just to be a little bit you know a little safer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, uh, the mesh tool and see what's going to happen when I click on this is it's going, to, it's going to sort of follow these contours depending on where I click them. So I want them to go mainly, I'm, I'm hoping to get some mainly vertical stripes. 
Uh, that could work too. Okay. And I'm, and if you want some more points in there, you can, it's usually good to, to click on the actual intersections. And, or, or not. There we go. Okay. I could probably work with that. Okay. So all those little points you see, what we're going to do essentially is we're going to pick uh, a point over here uh, with the direct selection tool, because remember the regular selection tool will select an entire object and all the points within, while the um, direct selection tool will just select one of those points at a time. And that's what we really want to do. We want to transfer those over one by one. So I'm going to start off and you can, I'll just start off with one and then I'll show you, you can actually apply uh, color to multiple points if you happen to have them selected in a group as well. So I'll start off just super simple because you, if you look over here on this side, you see it's much lighter. And then of course it gets darker on the left side because you know, we can see where the light source is coming from, from this obvious highlight there. So I'll click, uh, let's see, it looks like these are pretty much the same color. So I could actually select this one. I could either hold down the shift key and select the second one, or I could even drag over one or two or three points at a time. And you see they're all selected. So now what I can do, now that I've got these three or four points selected, I can grab my uh, eyedropper tool and then try to click on an area that corresponds to these points that I've selected and boom, you see, very subtle now. Uh, I don't know if you can even see that because it is so subtle. Uh, in fact, why don't I do something that, that's a little less subtle so that you can see that a little bit better. Let me grab one of these areas on the darker side. So I'm gonna deselect. I don't, I don't wanna uh, use the eyedropper tool. I'm gonna go back and get the direct selection tool. Uh, we see how, for instance, how dark this area is. Let me try that. So I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna drag over those two points right there. And again, with the um, eyedropper tool, I'm going to click there and you see what it does. See, that's, that's a little bit easier to see with, uh, with that. So let me try to get some of these darker areas on this side. And again, you can either select them individually if you like, or you can simply drag over them, holding down shift so that you can select more than one at a time. And grab my eyedropper tool, come over here and maybe grab that and see what a nice subtle shadow we've we've already got on that side. So maybe I'll do the same thing here. I'll grab these three guys, three or four of these guys at a time. Get my eyedropper tool, click on that. So you see how nicely that's working out. Um, and I was about to fix that, but if I look carefully, I see it actually does have a little bit of a, you know, it's probably some reflective light coming, you know, from the leaf or something like that. But uh, let's see, what else do we need to get? It looks like we got some dark area here. So let me see what I've got. Maybe there, there, and maybe even down here. I don't know. Let's try and see. And then get the eyedropper tool. Ooh, that's a little too dark, maybe. That's a little bit better. There we go. And you notice that you can change your mind while they're still selected if it, if it doesn't look as good as you thought it might. So, um, let's see. Over here, we got, we've got a, almost white right there. So let me get um, maybe this one and this one. And let me try to pick that color. Nice. OK. And let's see. Now, right in here. I could go a couple of ways with that. I might, I might go ahead and put in that white highlight, but I might also do something like I did with one of these guys too. Uh, but let's just see. I'm gonna. I'll start off with the highlight, which looks like it's about right here. Let's see how that looks. Not bad. Not bad. I might actually go with that, but I, I still like that sort of irregular pattern uh, that I think one of the brush tools will um, help us with. Now it also looks like we've got an this this line looks like it almost perfectly follows this one, so I might go with that. I'm going to hit shift, grab these anchor points all the way down along that line there. 
grab my eyedropper tool and maybe try to hit it right there on that little dark orangish reddish piece there and see how that looks. So it's almost a little too subtle, but I'm gonna leave it there. As I said, I'm probably gonna go on top of that with an actual line uh, in, a, in a, just a moment. But let's see what else I can do there. That's good. Okay, looks like we got a little bit of white down there too. So let me see if I can't take care of that. So maybe right there and right there. So while that's selected, I'll. It's more of a gray. I might have to exaggerate it a bit and try that. Uh, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. I kind of like that right there. That's somewhere nicely in the middle. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see how much more. Looks, looks we got that. Uh, well, let's see. Maybe a little bit. Looks like there's a bit of a shadow here I should probably try to get. So I'll grab that. Maybe this one, this one, and that one. Go for there. Uh, maybe get something sort of here. Almost a little too dark. I'm going to try to get a little bit lighter. There we go. That's, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, and also, of course, this comes into a little bit of where to exercise your artistic license because, you know, we're not trying to get it exactly. We're trying to get as close as we possibly can. Um, I don't know that you might try to get all that kind of detail right there. That looks like that might be a little bit extreme. Those, you know, that sort of texture. But again, that kind of, that, that's kind of your call in a way. Uh, I'm gonna lock the back for just a moment because I don't wanna accidentally select something. I'm gonna try to get that stripe down the center and I'll just call that stripe. And I'm going to, I'll actually trace, I'll, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna trace it over here, but then I'll just scoot it over there because we've got the central point right there, right there that we can kind of line it up with. Uh, that matches pretty close. I just need to swap that around. It's not so bad at the moment. It's that sort of a, a dark, uh, not quite the color I wanted, but I'm gonna scoot it over. In fact, I think I can just hold down shift till I line it up with that one and release. And uh, not bad, it's just not quite the exact color I wanted. So I'm gonna select it, bring that color to the front, uh, it's actually the stroke, I should say, I'll bring that to the front. And with the eyedropper tool, I'll try to click that. I really like that little bit right there. Let's see what that looks like. Oops. So I need to flip those around. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Very subtle. I might need more than one of those because it looks like it's a slightly darker stripe. And then... Um, sort of a shadowy thing behind it. So what I might do, I might try this crazy trick. I'm going to copy that, Control-C or Command-C, depending on whether you're on the Mac or the PC. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to Paste in Back, because this is a nice little trick that we used at the t-shirt shop I used to work at. So I'm going to Paste in Back. Now, while it is still selected, I'm going to increase the stroke considerably. Okay, and then I'm going to, let me see here. I might try to get a darker color. I might sort of just try to approximate that color there so you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna switch it to red so you can see what I'm talking about. So see, I've actually got, now I've got two stripes. I've got one on top of the other. I'm not too crazy about that red though might have to uh might have to actually use the eyedropper tool so while it's still selected i'm going to try to grab that sort of dark brownish color there whoops and i'll have to probably swap it oh and but while it's still selected remember i can i can come in here and increase it because i've still got the one behind the other one selected. So it's once you deselect it, it's, it gets kind of tricky to select it because it's behind the other one. So uh, while, in fact, let me uh, 
Here's the only problem with it though, I see. It's like this, the color is not that bad. I still wanna, um, um, I still wanna adjust it a little bit, but, I see, but notice how it just sort of stops, just like that, it's a little odd. So I'm going to select it. And with my stroke, you, you see under the stroke tab, you've got these options for caps and corners. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a round cap. That looks a little bit better. Uh, let me see, round join didn't really apply here because we don't have any joins. We've just got those two points. Um, but in both cases, I don't think I want the regular stroke. I might want this irregular thing just to see how it looks. But in order to get to the one underneath, I think probably the quickest way would be just to cut it. And then just, and, and not to copy anything else, because once I, I cut or copy something else, it's gonna erase it. So when I cut it, it's just gonna be floating around in, in RAM, so to speak. So I dare not cut or copy anything else. So I'm gonna cut it. So now while this one is selected, make sure I've got stroke to the front. I'll go back to my brushes and I might try this uh, charcoal feather one more time. Not bad. Um, let me see, I might try to take the stroke down a little bit. You notice it's at one point. I might bring it back down to 0.75 or, oh, I kind of like that point, that, that half point. Okay, now let's see what happens when I paste. And I'm not gonna paste, I'm gonna paste in front. So that means when this paste, it's gonna paste in front of that one. So Command F or Control F if you're on the, um, on the PC, and let's just see what that looks like. I might still need to make that, looks like, see, I might need to still make that a little bit broader, that stroke underneath. So again, this is very delicate what I'm doing. I'm gonna cut the one again, the one on top, I'm cutting it, which just sort of, you know, sticks it in RAM, and I'm gonna increase it, the weight under stroke, Maybe I will try one point. Let's just see what that looks like. And then uh, Command F to paste in front. Well, maybe. I still think it needs to be a little darker. So now it's a little easier because I'm selecting the one on top. So I just I just click on it and it's, it, it of course selects the one on top. So let me maybe see if I can get a little, I might try to get that a little bit darker. Um, so while it's selected, I'll just click on that. And of course, it immediately assumes I meant the fill. I don't, so I just swap them around. And maybe once again, maybe I go to the brush, that charcoal feather, but I make it a um, little thinner. And let me just click off of it so we can see how the uh, that's looking, and I might stop obsessing over it. I think that's pretty good for what we're doing for the moment. I still think the one underneath, I could probably go with maybe a, a lighter orange, but I think for our purposes, just for right now, that's not that bad. The one other thing I do wanna do, so you can see, oh, save, by all means. I should have saved this, <laughs> like half an hour ago, I should have saved this. So I'll just call this ladybug demo and down in my downloads, which is a, of course a terrible place to save it. You really want to save it in an actual folder. Um, I think the one other thing I'd like to do just as far as this goes, I really like that look, that very shiny look on the back of that. So I think I'm going to try, what I think I'm going to do with that I'm gonna make a new shape. Let me go ahead and hide my, oh, no, excuse me, not hide, but let me rather um, lock my stripe layer, make a new layer, and I'll call this highlight. Okay, and I will just make a circle roughly that size, so just a little loop there. That's pretty good. And I don't really want that to be, um, you know, brown or anything. I'm just gonna do white, but I'm gonna flip that around so that I've got a, um, actually I want a white fill with a white stroke. Now for my brushes this time, what I think I'm gonna do, 
Um, this is nice, but you see how much bigger that is. So I'm going to come over here with my brushes tab active. I'm going to click over on this sort of sub menu there. And I want to open my brush library. And I want to see the, um, I think I want to see the artistic ones. And under there, so I'm looking for open brush library, artistic and watercolor. I think watercolor might have a good one for it. So let me try that. And you see there are, there are our options. We've got some nice ones in there. I think this sort of one of these chalky almost ones at the bottom would fairly do, do a pretty good job of emulating that. So let's try that. We'll probably have to switch our colors around, but I think that's going to do a pretty good job. So let me, I'm going to try this one first. It looks kind of fun. Oh, that's not bad. Not quite what I was looking for, but let's see, maybe this one. It's not bad. Oh, not that one. Oh, that's that's not bad. So what I could do, if it's if it doesn't quite line up, I could just try rotating it a little bit so that it does line up better. Or, or I could try stacking them on top of each other. Try that one. That one's kind of interesting. Um, you can also increase or de decrease your stroke on that so you get a better idea of how it's doing or or not doing so great. So I might, I might actually try mixing a couple of them. So I've got that one. I'm going to just shift it over here. I'm just holding down shift and dragging it so it keeps it in a straight line. Okay, that's one possibility. Almost looks a little too much like a snail for me, though. Um, what I might do, I might, uh, I'm just alt. Uh, I'm holding down shift and alt, which makes a copy. So I still have this one over here, but I've got some room to experiment now. I'm going to look at some of the other brushes. Um, let's see here. Okay, that's artistic watercolor. I'm really looking over here for brushes is where I should be looking. And once again, I'm going to go to open brush library artistic but this time i think i'm going to go with chark charcoal and pencil and see how those look oh okay there's some there's some interesting possibilities here so um in fact what i might do is just go ahead and drag this drag another copy shift alt whoops bring that over there and so while that's selected let me try some of these others oh that one's interesting i rather like that one See, and, and what I might need to do actually is I might need to stack, as I suggested, I might actually need to stack a couple on top of that. That is, I, I actually rather like that one. So uh, what I might do is shift alt again. Sometimes if you hold down shift and alt, it deselects it when you click on it. So you just have to click, hold it down and drag it over immediately. Then you can release. So let's just see while that's still selected. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. Pretty good. There's there's a lot of good options. Oh, maybe maybe that one. I kind of I think I kind of like that one. I think that one's turning out rather nicely. I might um, I might shrink. Yeah. See, I shrunk one of them, and I think I like that. So, and of course, you know, you can keep experimenting. There's there's a wonderful number of brushes that we have uh, available to us. But, and of course, this is just the beginning. I just wanted to get everybody uh, a good idea of how you can use the gradient tool, and, and not just the gradient tool, but how you can also combine it with some of the nice brushes that we could use for, for strokes to add details like highlights or additional shadows. See, I could probably do something similar with the shadows the way I did with the highlights on that portion there to get a little more of that irregular pattern that we've got that the gradient tool is, is marvelous for coming up with these uh, these really subtle uh, gradations, but sometimes you'll find it's a combination of that, the mesh gradient tool, plus some of the more uh, almost organic uh, brushes, I guess I could call them, that we have with, uh, you know, between the artistic chalk, charcoal, as well as the artistic watercolor. Okay. 
So I hope you found that helpful. So thanks again so much for joining me. I hope to see you all again soon and that you, of course, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye. Happy cartooning.